What comes to your mind when you think of an RTS genre? Well, for the majority of the subscribers on this channel, the answer is probably gonna be StarCraft 2. However, RTS, just like many other genres, encompasses a big number of broadly different games. Even if we pick only the top 10 best of them, we'll discover that each iconic title is pretty unique and has a lot to offer in terms of creativity and variety. But each RTS game has one thing in common. You start from zero and lead yourself and your army to victory. But how you do that is what makes a game truly unique. Not just units, graphics or sound, but how in the realm of the well-known genre you'll be making decisions. So today we'll have an unusual story. We'll dive into different RTS games, mostly competitive ones, and see how they approach the core gameplay of this genre. We can compare many things in them, but for today we'll focus on one thing in particular, the art of war. How different games encourage or force players to act in a certain way to achieve victory. To begin with, the classic and, I would dare to say, the old-school way is to destroy all of your opponent's structures. This is pretty much true for almost every RTS game. You either do it manually or just force your opponent to surrender. This also happens to be one of the most boring ways of achieving victory, and yet the majority of RTS games are built around that simple rule. In reality though, the conditions for such victory happen extremely rarely. Mostly because players don't want to waste their time when they understand that the game is over and the chance to come back is miserably low. This is our first way to achieve victory. Just force your opponent to surrender by making his chances and options very limited. Usually by simply obtaining a bigger economy and army, while also destroying everything your enemy possesses. In 95% of games you just need to decisively win one single fight, or maybe a series of smaller scale conflicts to end the match. This is the first and universal rule for any artist game. Crush your opponent's army and leave little to no time to rebuild. However, most artist games have Fog of War, which creates an extra point of interest and allows for mind games. This happens fairly often. If you have any examples in your gaming career, share them in the comments. But in StarCraft 2 community, there are at the very least two moments which went down in history. Both included the same player Idra. Two times he would be too quick and too impatient to give in, but in fact it was just his miscalculation. The first time it happened with Huck, when he believed that Void Rays were real and thus would become the cause of his defeat. Now out on the field and it looks like there's some Zerglings doing a counterattack in the main. The Void Rays, all hallucinations, doing absolutely no damage whatsoever. There's the blink up onto the high ground, just trying to distract Idra. Those hallucinated Void Rays almost fully charged, Wheat. And... Idra left the game? Oh. Oh my goodness, Idra. The second time it was versus MMA, where the lack of scouting led to giving up way too early. Funny enough, but Idra didn't know that MMA also made a terrible mistake himself. Great Marine Count 53. Yeah, and uh, where did that medevac go? I'm not sure he's taken out the old. Oh! Oh! Oh, oh! no! Oh, oh my goodness, MMA! Oh! Marcus, that is also not a good use of a third command center. No, it is not. No, it is not. The uh, Also, the medevac is about to get spotted. It is going to go down. He'll take out the Marines. No, he'll wait for the higher concentration of mutas. They are making their way over. He's going to try to engage this, and there are a lot of mutas out on the field right now. Another medevac will go down, and will MMA... Uh, it, I mean, ultimately be defeating himself here as that will put him behind. He needed that. A lot of Banelings being morphed right now. The Muta count is very high. Idra has not lost, I do not even believe, a single, a single Muta in all this. And, uh, well, gosh, MMA moving forward, but Idra looks incredibly prepared for this. Another drop by MMA up at that expansion, trying to do a little bit of damage. And now Idra's rolling in. Look at the Mutalist count. Banelings getting absolutely obliterated by these tanks, but the Mutalist count is just a little bit too high. Idra now streaming forward with Zerglings, Mutas, everything is overrunning this force by MMA. Wait, oh! what? 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 Did Idra just leave another one game? So, 
The second way to win in almost any RTS is to make your opponent believe you are too far ahead. This happens not too often, just as with the last third universal rule – destroy all of his structures. Well, we kinda discussed that and while this rule might be boring at the first glance and you can vividly imagine many games where you were just barely cleaning up the base of your opponents, which should have been, you know, dead 5 minutes ago, there were some amazing moments in the history of RTS esports with just unbelievable comebacks due to this mechanic. While it seldom happens, there are surprisingly plenty of such iconic moments. Maybe they become well known just because it's a rare occasion. But we won't spend our valuable time discussing all of them. But most of them are similar though. A player with a weaker but usually more mobile army strikes the bases, while the other player with the strongest force just tries to either do the same or come back to the ruins of what once used to be his base. One of the most heartbreaking examples happened just one year ago with Dark and Creator, where the latter made the painful mistake of letting his opponent run rampant in his homeland. This is it. I think in the next minute we'll find out who is making it into the quarterfinals. Creator able to, or not able to prevent Dark from getting into his main base. The wall gets knocked down, but he is continuing to snipe up hatcheries on the other side of the map. He is continuing to pick up his units, and his army does not look like it's an army that's going to be going down easily. Uh, the thing is, though, Creator is going to have to recall eventually, man, because these links are plus three links with Adreno Glance, and he recalls no, half his army, but he loses the Nexus. Oh, no, Creator. I think the dreams are falling apart here. He has lost each and every single base. He has the better army, the army that could have actually won the fight straight up. But Dark says, I'm not fighting your army, mate. I'm counterattacking. And you can see it in the chair. Creator is devastated. He is going to lose each and every single building. And it seems that it will be Dark who's moving into the quarterfinals to meet his teammate hero. Every single one of these buildings, these are the last lifelines there. But Dark takes out the Last building. Those are the three rules that are common for the vast majority of RTS games. But here is where all the fun begins, because each game has nuances and tiny little aspects that allow us to expand those basic, generic rules and ideas. Since we are all big fans of StarCraft 2, let's start with this game. Unlike many other RTS games, StarCraft 2 has limited resources which are bound to expire. No race has an ability to generate extra money out of nowhere. At one point in the game, both players will run out of both types of resources, which means one thing – an ultimate battle until none of the players has a standing army. This used to be a rare sight, but it became much more common after Legacy of the Void, where the late game became a cherry on top of amazing macro games. The uniqueness of StarCraft 2 in regards to other strategies is in this final standoff, which doesn't really happen in other games where you have means to collect resources in one extra way or another. Another extremely rare sight in StarCraft 2 is a draw, which could be achieved in two ways. Either one player cannot reach the structures of the other player, usually happens with Terran race because their buildings can fly, or when both players have ended in a Tsuktwang, with every action making the situation just worse for both of them. Some of the draws might be very dull and boring, like it was in How to do Swarm with Swarm Hosts, but some could be unbelievably entertaining, like this one. Uh, well, yeah, I don't know actually. Oh, he lost both. Oh, he has no SCVs. Yeah, so you're right. Okay, so this so is enough. This building is gonna, gonna burn go down. down. And oh, it it's his last factory. <laughs> so just suicide on it, right? Like then, that's where you can just suicide on it. Void, he's sending out one more void ray. Okay. Wait, where's the other one? Didn't he have two void rays? Yeah, he, yeah, he had two. Uh, it's like AFK. Units are being pulled out of position. But Paul, even if you pick up everything, how are you going to save your factory? Yeah. Also, that's one less minute back healing. And there is this, still this sniper over here on, on the edge. Like, this game is over. I this think is Strange so is about to win. All right, Strange is going to try to come in here now. Remember, that factory is not going to move fast. If he loses that, the game's over. He's going to bring everything, Nick. Tasteless. He's going to go for it. He's, he's going for it. Go he's going for the factory. Get the factory. No, the factory. Get the factory. He's go not going to go for the factory. He's going for the army instead. What? Okay, well, now he can go for the factory. All right, he's going for it. He's got to get that in the red, and it's going to burn down. The game's going to be over. Uh, and he's in pursuit right now. He's winning the fight, and he's killing the factory at the same time. This is it. One of the biggest upsets I've seen in years. Can he, can Bolt he, is going to be eliminated. He's coming down now. He's going to try to stim and save it before it goes into the red. He's going to go to the red. He manages to keep wow. it in the orange. Oh, my God. Oh! And he gets the medevac.
That, that's it. I mean, five Marines. How are five Marines ever going to kill two assimilators? Okay, so the only way that Bolt can force a draw is if Bolt kills the last Void Ray. Wait, wait yeah, yeah, where, where is that? Okay, okay. so this, this is the super MVP right now, because this factory could potentially idle over here, where Stalkers and Sentries cannot reach it. So the only way for Paul to force out a draw and we go to game six is killing this Void Ray. And the fact that this Void Ray right now is exposed actually drives me insane. Yeah, it's, it's kind of an odd spot to put that <sighs> in. And I think the only way, um, you can see he's actually sending some of his army back, but the, the count now is low enough that Stalkers can actually just win yeah, yeah. Uh, the fight. It, it's no longer like dependent on, for instance, having the backing of an immortal here. That's why Paul is just like kind of like, uh, how do you say that? Uh, you know, bring this, uh, bringing the factory to safety. Yeah. Uh, okay, he's going to keep this over That's here. That's what I was trying to say. He's trying to escort <laughs> the factory into safety. All right, no, here we go. Oh! No! What? What? No! What? No! What? No! 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 What just what? happened? No way! No! Did it take too long? Did like not enough stuff die? What? Now, some games have foreseen that long, exhausting battles until the very last unit or a draw is not something we're looking for. It's not everybody's cup of tea. So instead, these games have a different path for preventing stalemates. One way is to make the main resource not expire at all, but just become very limited after a certain amount of time. Like it's done in Combat and Conquer. In such games, there is only one type of resources. The Ore, Supply or Tiberium, depending on what game we're talking about, which slowly regenerates when it expires or is being mined at a very slow pace, like for example in Red Alert 3. Additionally, you can capture all depots to acquire a constant, yet small amount of resources each minute. This means that the player with a larger economy and higher number of harvesters or bases is still going to have an advantage, even though his scale is limited. To counter that, in CNC units have veterancy mechanic, which grants them bonuses based on how many enemy units they killed. This allows to counter a better economy by just having better engagements and micro. A veterancy mechanic could be an interesting way to maintain this intricate balance between army and economy. Company of Heroes is far from being a classic RTS title. However, they've done one thing amazingly well. The veterancy system is both unique and meaningful. Not only units gain a simple buff on accuracy, reload time or something else, they also open new abilities and synergies for themselves and other units. In comparison with other games, the bigger army you have in this game, the less manpower you gain. And this is a scarce resource that's needed for every unit, especially for infantry reinforcements. You might find yourself in a situation where no matter how much map control, oil and ammo, two other crucial resources for tanks and upgrades by the way, you have, you are still losing the game due to trading poorly with your opponent who slowly chips away at your army, gaining veterancy for his troops and thus building up a compounding advantage over time. However, Company of Heroes also has the victory point system, which means that you just need to hold a certain territory to gain points to simply trigger a victory condition. Again, at first glance, it's a boring mechanic, but it achieves two moments. First, it gives a clear pathway for a victory condition in a game with no base building and standard economy, but most importantly, it creates this nail-biting, adrenaline endgame with fights to the last man on the victory point. Some games decided that it would be really cool to implement all victory conditions at once, like Age of Empires did that. You can destroy landmarks to win, you can hold sacred sites for 10 minutes to win, you can build a wonder, hold it for 50 minutes and win, you can do all three of them at the same time. But what if nothing works and you are just facing the draining late game? And oh boy, the late games in Age of Empires can last not hours, but freaking days. For this specific case, Age of Empires 4 has two cool mechanics. First of all, some of the resources in this game are infinite. Food could be gathered by villagers at farms, and gold is given to you by your trading caravans. Additionally, you can capture relics which give you gold, but after the late game upgrade they can also provide you with free other resources. But if we talk about the map, the wood is limited, so is stone and gold mines. And if in the beginning in the game your income could be, let's say, 1000 gold, in the late game it suddenly becomes 300, and now every nugget is expensive as hell and you need to manage it wisely, because gold gives you access to more powerful units, while wood and food only enables the most cheap, basic, we got those troops at home units. 
You can of course use trade mechanics and sell food for gold and then buy wood or whatever you need, but that's not the best thing about Age of Empires. This is the moment when different factions come into play. Each faction in Age of Empires 4 has its own unique list of advantages. Some factions shine in early or mid game, whilst others have incredibly strong bonuses for late game, which can include a better economy. The English get gold from their farms which allows you to generate two most important goods at the same time. The French have a landmark which passively collects the selected type of resources which could be very useful in many situations. The bonuses vary and it would take a whole long 10 page essay to talk about it. But you get the gist, right? Now, a newcomer to this scene, Stormgate, has its own approach which stands. Units are meaningful and just like in Starcraft 2, the final battle must commence and be impactful. The main resource is finite, and the only way for you to gain more is by getting creep camps. This means two things. First, at one point each unit becomes more precious and expensive, and second, you cannot really sit at home and you need to exercise a greater control over the map, otherwise your opponent will just outproduce you. This perfectly tackles the issue StarCraft 2 had, where both players are just too indecisive to engage, which makes the game last 4 hours. In Stormgate, you are forced to act around creep camps whether you want it or not. But one RTS game thinks that all we just talked about is bullshit. We don't need those boring rules, holding points and grinding and the enemy structures. That's just boring and stupid. Instead, just make a giant robot with tons of HP that will be simultaneously your avatar. If it gets killed, the game is lost, no matter how much stuff you have on the battlefield. This is Supreme Commander, where one single unit decides the fates of the players. Hide it from the enemy's eyes or use it as a kamikaze in a last ditch attempt to cause a draw, the choice is yours. One thing is certain, it creates a new way to end games, cause rage quits and have the most unbelievable comebacks. Another titan in esports and artist industry is Worker 3, which is a very unique game in its own sense and there are so many options and influences on what can determine a game compared to a lot of other traditional artist titles. This can be because of items, creep spawns and locations, hero choice, level and ability build and many many other small details that will determine specific win conditions. But that's a story for another time though as this game and topic deserves a whole video just for itself. As you can see, despite all those games technically belonging to the same genre, the way you play could be absolutely unique and different in each of them. It's not a coincidence that every game in this list is an iconic game because each and every of them found a new way to add an extra level of depth to the well-established genre and make it even more fun and engaging. Now, what's your favorite win condition in the game? Leave your opinion in the comments, thank you for watching, subscribe for more artist content and see you next time.